so you can communicate with me via chat so it is easier for us to uh, communicate so am i cleared or not okay so shall we start a lecture or should we wait for your other uh, colleagues or friends okay so it's almost uh, 9 am so uh, very good morning to all of you i hope you all are stay safe and uh, healthy and uh, what i'm going what we are going to do is to discuss a very lengthy topic so that's why i want you to start it right now because it itself is a very lengthy topic <coughs> however it's not covered fully but i try my best to actually give you the whole picture and whole scenario and all the diseases which are related to this topic now basically uh, Uh, we are touching to the infection and pre-invasive lesion of three important uh, part of the female genital system that is vulva vagina and cervix right so what we are going to do we are going to uh, uh, i'm going to start the lectures and what you do if you have any query uh, you can write it down at your notebook and we will discuss in the last right so that would be easier for me also to communicate properly with you so so it's also uh, didn't cause me a disturbance in the lecture so i hope so please uh, mute your mics and uh, please be with me and if uh, there is something if my voice is breaking or something like that you can chat me or even in between the lecture if you find something very difficult or uh, something which is not you able to get it so please uh, write it to me so i'll help respond so <clears throat> starting with the very important very basic and very interesting even uh, this topic is infection in the pre invasive lesion right i hope everyone has somewhat uh, have uh, came to know some uh, terminologies related with this topic and i i i know i'm i have no doubt that you are quite few of you are quite worse with this topic but uh, for them uh, i hope i'll put some new points in, into that and from that we start with the objectives so basically so so this is basically the pictorial diagram which actually explains to you because it is easier to uh, you know uh, keep it uh, memorize that if you see a picture of something so so basically we are going to discuss about lower uh, genital tract things which include vulva vagina and cervix now we are going to just stick it up three of these things and we mainly focus about the infection and pre invasive right so before going to start little bit anatomy a little bit histology that you all know that uh, we are not going to touch this part so we are not going in detail right so vulva is an outer part which is not included in this picture and uh, this is vagina and this is cervix now the important part is that you should know the cervix is divided into two parts ecto cervix and endo cervix now this part which is actually facing toward the vagina or through the outer surface or external walls is an ecto cervix right and this inner part is an endo cervix right and the difference between them is the layering the type of layer or type of epithelium which is covered which is actually covering the cervix so at the outer cervix or we call it ecto cervix there is a stratified squamous epithelium and in the inner cervix or inner endo cervix we have a columnar epithelium right so if you what epithelium the organ is covered so you, it is easier for you to actually delineate the exact pathology right so you know most of the carcinoma arising from epithelium called squamous epithelium right and most of the adenocarcinoma arise from the glandular epithelium which is composed of columnar epithelium cuboidal epithelium so you can predict or you can say that whatever the lesions which are arising from ecto cervix are actually going to be form carcinoma if all the uh, if all the condition uh, they will get it and if something some pathology involved in the endo cervix so it is going to be adenocarcinoma right if we are talking about neoplasia in terms of so in the same way the vagina is covered by 
uh, squamous epithelium and vulva is also covered by squamous epithelium, but keratinized, right? So I have uh, one uh, picture, right? So just uh, just for the start, let me say. So just for the start, for example, if somebody give me this picture and ask me what is the what is the organ? So I even I don't even uh, able to pinpoint the organ. But yes, there are hints and there are points which can predict what is it. So suppose if you are going to get this picture, so you should realize this is the squamous epithelium, right? I know you are know this this region and those who don't have or some problems in that identify that. So this is this part is basically composed of multi-layering of the squamous epithelium. And if you see in detail, what is a uh, squamous epithelium cells look like? It is like flattened like cells with a nuclei, right? Such kind of, uh, obviously, a uh, picture, you can find it when you draw a keratinocyte. So this is a normal keratinocyte. And mind it, the ratio between the nuclear and cytokines is two is to one, right? This is a universal, and this is for every cell. For a normal every cells, uh, we have two part of a cytoplasm and one part of a nucleus. And if this alter alters, so we can uh, go what's wrong. And some, uh, most of the time, it because of the dysplasia and uh, the whole cycle is start turning toward the carcinoma formation. So it is very very important to actually identify the normal cell. For example, this cells. If you see, this is not exactly the. Uh, diameter of this cells, but if roughly I draw it, so you can see a rounded, very innocent nuclei with the center pinpoint nucleoli and the cytoplasm, which is very uh, good. There is no mitosis, there is no alteration. The nuclear and cytoplasm size is roughly two is to one, and there is no darkening of color, so there is no hyperchromasia. So what so ever, this is a normal keratinocyte and this is a normal keratin, right? And sorry, the keratinocyte layer that is forming a squamous epithelium, right? So if we got this pink color material layer over this, so we can say this is a keratinized squamous epithelium. And I just, just my point is to showing you this is that if this part is only present in the skin or it, there's one condition in the cervix when the cervix is actually prolapsed from the outer part. So this epithelium, ectocervix become keratinized and it look like this. So, so it's a benign condition, obviously. So otherwise, beside this benign condition, the ectocervix, the vagina is actually covered by non-keratinized squamous epithelium. So, so I hope this is clear, right? And this is the uh, connective tissue. We are not talking about in detail about this, but we are focusing about this. That this is the normal squamous epithelium. This is keratinized here, although it is not related to that. I'm not saying it's from here, but I'm just explaining you what are the structure you can find in the normal. So here, the difference here is that in ectoservice and vagina, you can find squamous epithelium without keratinization, right? So this is the normal, very basic histology of a uh, cervix and vagina. Now in vulva, what you expect, vulva is actually external uh, skin covered part. So definitely here, because we're going to just discuss, uh, uh, going to restart the vulva part. So in vulva, because it's an outer skin uh, folding of an external genitalia, so it is covered by keratinized layer. So keratinized layer is always non-nucleated. It's a pink color material. And below that, there's a layers of keratinocytes, which actually form a squamous epithelium. And beneath that, there is a connective tissue. So this is the normal histology you will find in the vulva. So then after that, I hope you are just uh, having a glance of what is uh, the cells and what are the histology. Now, starting with the vulva, right? So what we are going to do, we just discuss first the infection of cervix, vulva, and vagina. And in the second part, we're going to see the pre-invasive lesion of that lower genital system. So in the vulva, the first topic, what we need to discuss is the infections, right? So uh, I hope you are all aware of it, but there are some tricks and some tools in this. So I hope you will get it. So uh, you should know the vulva is composed of a stratified squamous epithelium with skin and mexa, which compose of hair follicles because sebaceous gland, epigrand glands. But uh, apart from that, there are two important glands in the vulva, which are Bartholin and Skinny's glands. Because there are sometimes there are uh, some cyst formation take place there because of certain uh, traumatic condition and because of other etiological agent actually causing these to form. 
and by doing the uh, histology or by doing the histopathology, you will easily identify which cysts belong to which gland. So if you identify the epithelium, so you can identify it. Anyhow, beside this uh, benign lesion, we're just going to focus on the infection. And uh, see, these three are the very important infections of the vulva, but it doesn't mean they are the only infection in the vulva. There are a lot of infections. The whole class is dedicated to that if you are going in detail. But what we are going to discuss, we are going to see the brief uh, uh, key points of some important uh, uh, infections, which are usually uh, very often come in your exam. So um, these are the uh, clinical features, which it, you can you can find out about uh, the scenario in exam which says that 45 years old female came with burning uh, sensation at the vulva with erythma edema and ulcers and excoriation now so you should be aware of such kind of uh, symptoms which are very uh, i think vague symptoms because it can be because of even in the pre-invasive lesions also but how you uh, like uh, take on uh, the patient in in this way we are going to see the clinical picture first, right? So in vulva, uh, we are going to see first very important viral infection, which is the herpes genitalis, or you can say which is caused by herpes simplex virus. Now, this is very important. Uh, and I, I again, uh, I want to highlight you, the herpes simplex virus is different from HPV, human papilloma virus, right? So don't confuse with these two etiology when most of the time students do get confused. With it. This is herpes simplex virus, right? And the idea or in the ideal and the highlight point is that it has a painful multiple vesicle or ulcers, which later become pustules and crust, right? I'll, I'll show you the picture. This, is, these are, this, These are the pictures of herpes simplex virus. So please don't confuse this with HPV virus. This is herpes simplex virus, mostly type 2. It has various subtypes and types and various variants. But we are discussing and focusing on type 2 variants. And it usually present with a painful, uh, this kind of uh, painful eruptive vasicles will later become pus and crust, such kind of things. So always, always think about when we talk about vulva and we talk about HSV. So always think and uh, just uh, stick to that picture. And then what is the important thing? How do you identify? No one can be 100% sure on clinical uh, picture. So we are going to take the biopsy. Now for uh, such kind of lesion, this smear is actually uh, taken. And uh, this is nothing but take, uh, actually doctor takes the scrapping of that lesion and it uh, put it on the slide and stain it with the specialist in which is called a gym. So it is nothing but like crank smear is like, like this. So it is different from actual biopsy because you know there in the biopsy there are also certain uh, certain other kind of procedure also involved. We have to put the biopsy in 10% uh, buffer formalin and then we uh, put the whole uh, tissue in the processor for processing and then we stain and then we see. So there's a difference here. Only we get the cells. Here we get the whole, uh, sorry, in the biopsy material, we've got the whole tissue. So there's a different methods and there's different way. And depending upon the scenario, sometimes we don't get much information in, in FNAC or even the trench smear. So we, we opt for biopsy of that patient if you are not sure about the things. So just to remind you that it can be asked in your exam what is trench smear is nothing but taking a scrapping and stain it on the side and see in the microscope you will get some cells and out of those cells you need to identify the key points of herpes simplex virus if you find it. but this trench smear is not only restricted to herpes there are other viruses also which you can use it right so what you're going to see in this right this is important so i have this is the biopsy side which we are going to touch in just a while First, see this. This is the trank smear. What, what we do, we just took this uh, scrappings, place it on the slide, and we stained it on Jimsa. Right? Very simple as that. And in Jimsa, because this is truly the uh, from the patient uh, suffering from herpes virus, so we got such kind of cells. So if you notice, there's a large cell. There's a one cell which has a nucleus with multi uh, lobulations, right? This is the characteristic finding of the herpes simplex virus. 
inside the nucleus you will find the lot of uh, information which actually making you identifying the herpes simplex infection so number one is the ground glass appearance right sometimes in uh, scenario based questions uh, they will give you hints like a patient is suffering from that and the slide shows a ground glass appearance multi nucleation nucleus molding so the answer is if you are getting some details in your nuclear uh, of the scrapping of patient so whatever the nuclear finding you are getting with Uh, includes nuclear molding multi nucleation nuclear molding is that one nuclear is mold with another nu uh, nuclei right multi lobulation is what there is multi it should be like the cell should be like this now sorry some problem with the uh, mouse i don't know i'm very sorry uh, okay so what you actually expect from the normal biopsy this should be a cytoplasm and this should be a nucleus right this is a, <laughs> a normal keratinocyte it could be like this it could be like this but in 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 basically in the uh, scrapings some there are because this is a very normal procedure so you can get some because because of the scrapping the shape of the cells can be big, uh, rounded can be oval can be anything so before predicting or before going to uh, discuss about the shape you should see the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio and in this case this is definitely right now here you can doubt and you can questions ki how do we differentiate it from the uh, this plastic cell because it's a very valid uh, reason to call because this uh, is uh, look like there is disturbance in the nuclear cytoplasm ratio so whether it is a this plastic cell or it is a cell which is actually uh, in in visible by the uh, viral infection so the clue is the idea is the point is that first of all you find this is an abnormal cells with a multi nucleation second say you, you you didn't find any nucleoli right and multi uh, lobulation is a specific features of viral infusions not for the uh, cancerous things or pre cancerous lesions so that is a third point fourth point you, you didn't find any abnormal amitotic fever amitotic fever is like that you can find the cells and with the mitosis like this things and very dark color of nucleus although dark color of nucleus is here but you you didn't find the mitosis you didn't find the nucleoli so and plus the clinical pictures are also there for correlating the things so that's how you make a diagnosis so this is what the trench smears and sometimes some people call these cells are trench cells so uh, not nowadays but uh, in some few questions back when i uh, attempted so i i just found in few questions they they use the word trench cells which actually in indicating the viral infusion uh, in a particular keratinocyte okay so this is a transfer for hsv and this is a biopsy you know biopsy we have a whole chunk in biopsy we will find this is some artifactual things which actually actually this epithelium is actually artifactually uh, uh, disrupted from each another cells but with in between them there are cells which are abnormal if you focus in this cell so this is abnormal cells right it has a multi obviously the size is different see if if you considering this cell this is a normal cell for example uh, this is a normal cell and if you compare this cell with the, this cell so definitely this is an abnormal cell so in this normal cell also there is some chylocytic change we'll going to discuss later but uh, let's say take this cell this is a very normal cell it has a nuclear it has a cytoplasm but compared to this cell to even this cell you will find that the nucleus is very much higher right a uh, size of the nucleus is higher and you will if you if you really appreciate it i i i think you can there is a multi lobulations and there is uh, no abnormal mitotic figures you can see molding here you can see ground glass appearance here ground glass appearance is just like blue bluish color of tinge all over the nuclei so if you notice this this is these are the cells with the viral infusion so i hope you are getting these uh, because these are the very important and very easy thing to pick rather than identify or tagging the slide with some other unimportant identification mark it's it, it is important to just understand what is the basic pathology here so this is a biopsy which actually showing nuclear inclusions which include a uh, multi lobulation it's a very good uh, cells you can really appreciate this uh, multi nucleation which is pathonomic of the hsv herpes simplex virus right i hope you get it uh okay so moving on to the next 
very important is the condyloma accumulator and condyloma data. Now, the people usually, and the students usually confuse with uh, these two things because this is the viral, viral infection, which is caused by HPV, right? And this is basically a trypanoma pallidum, a bacterial infection, uh, which is actually caused by a bacterial infection. Now, clinical picture is more or less same, and so you cannot even 100% uh, sure what is it, but there are some hints, for example, uh, condyloma accumulatum do represent the cauliflower-like pattern. However, they have a uh, widely spaced uh, elevated plaques. However, for confirmation, what you're going to see is, you're going to see the pictures. Now, first of all, in the condyloma accumulatum, what we see is a raised papule. So it, if this is the basic, uh, if this is a basic uh, baseline, I'm sorry, Let's make it out of pen. And if this is a basic, so it is a raised raised region. For example, it is raised from the baseline, and it is protruded like a papillary projection. You can see this is a papilla. And if you see in detail, you will pick it up that the epidermis is thickened. What do you mean by thickened? That if you remember the first picture I show you, there's a one uh, epidermis layer which is like this, and there's a retty ridges, and there's a epidermis. But if you notice here, the the overall the thickening of our epidermis with the kenthosis. The kenthosis means the widening space of keratinocyte. So here you these are the findings which actually indicate you there is something wrong in that, right? And if you go in detail, what you're going to see, you're going to see a very important point which is known as cytopathic effect. Most of the uh, students usually confuse what is a cytopathic effect, but it's nothing but if you see this keratinocytes, you will find there's a nuclear, and surrounding the nuclear is a white color space which is actually in yellow and that is that actually showing the nuclei with yellow is actually a chylocytic change this is very important most of the uh, students usually confuse with this and this is basically with chylocytic change this is chylocytic change and it is one and only because of the viral infection so all these uh, cytopathic change involving in the thickened epidermis if you get these two things you are sure about it that this is some kind of viral infection now for further assessment you can go for pcr and for other molecular tests to confirm which virus is that but if you see a slide and if you pick such kind of things so you can easily pick it's a virus. it's something is something which is related to viral infection so it's very important because the treatment plan is different Right, and you can easily differentiate it from the pre invasive lesions or the uh, dysplastic lesion. You need to you need to make a diagnosis, you need to make a line where you actually call it a dysplastic cell or a chylocytic cell in order to proceed the patient towards the exact treatment. Right, so, uh, so my idea is you to pick actually a chylocytic cell. See, it's very easy to say such kind of things like that, but. You know, if if we complicate this, it's very easy because sometimes keratinocyte get glycosylated and it also show in yellow. Although there's a different points which actually ping what is a chylocytic change, what what is the glycosylated change. But here for you, right, uh, for you people, like you don't, I don't want you to confuse uh, you or. Uh, but there are other also features which actually we need to, or the histopathologist need to be careful while diagnosing a viral infection. But for you, if you see a large nuclei with halo, there's a lot, a lot of large nuclei with halos, and you can see some cell with basaloid granule, that is also a sign of the viral infection. So you can easily pinpoint and you can easily call it something goes wrong. And if you find this along with the thickening of the uh, epidermis with this papillary projection like things so you can easily diagnose it's a condyloma accumulatum which is caused by the hpv so hpv actually causing condyloma accumulatum in herpes virus there's a vesicles which are actually uh, show the nuclear infusion so just for the region these are the signs these are the morphology of hsv herpes simplex virus which show nuclear changes and nuclear infusions and these are the picture and these are the biopsies which are actually indicating the condyloma accumulated, right? I hope you you get it. So moving forward, molluscum. Molluscum is also a very important, uh, uh, very important finding and actually a spot diagnosis, what you call it. So uh, this is the clinical picture, right? But 
in clinic picture you are not 100% sure so you will go for the biopsy and in the biopsy what you get it is these kind of eosinophilic body so this is a very pinpoint very easy to catch things because this is a specific for molluscum so if you notice this is an epidermis and beneath the epidermis there is a cluster of cells which have no nuclei so one can argue ki how can we differentiate it from the keratinocyte so you can say this keratinocyte has a nucleus and the cytoplasm however these are the bodies they have no nucleus they have no cytoplasm just a rounded is in a filled dark is in a filled color body so these are not the nucleus but some kind of cell which are actually infiltrating that so don't confuse these things so if you see most majority of have a granulated eosinophilic pink color cytoplasm and it is a pathonomic of molluscum continuum now what my idea is to showing you are focusing you on these things because these things are very easy this this is a spot diagnosis so you can get marks within a minute without wasting your time so uh, these things and infection part of things where you are just uh, hinge towards uh, some key points if you know that if you take that if you uh, focus on that you, you will get the full marks so there is no half marks card or something like that if you diagnose that thing you will get the full marks so this is molluscum so we are just uh, going to be little in rush because uh, we have a uh, very limited time so coming so well what we have uh, picked three infection which are important although there are a lot of infection but we we have picked three important important infections which are surface simplex virus uh, human papilloma virus and molluscum now in the vagina and in the cervix i hope you are all aware of uh, the normal uh, histology of vagina and cervix and we just did discuss in the very first slide so just let let it be the infections here so number one infection very really common is the candida right so most of you have uh, we did uh, know about it a immunocompromised patient basically get this kind of infection and even if the at the age of menopausal when there is the estrogen balance is disturbed and there is much more atrophy so such kind of infection came into play very frequently so so this is a very important picture this is a white cloud flake most of the cloudy cutter phase if you see this on the clinical picture you should first think about the fungal infection right on even uh, the fnac it, it, even on the slide and there is a special stain which we call as pas d that actually highlight the fungal hypis so these are the fungal hypis and you can easily pick it on the biopsy one i want to discuss about that is that most of the people do confuse with the there's some fungal spore also so this is a fungal spore and this is a fungal hypi so if you find these on the slide in the biopsy so you will really easily diagnose that the tissue is actually infiltrated by fungal hypi spore but apart from that don't ignore these things now these are the very minute bacterial colonies you can see which, which can normally be present in here and uh, but don't confuse these thing with these thing this comes with the experience obviously but if you hear also there are a lot of things and in the in the few cases uh, other in the other slides also we have some bacterial cases also but uh, the basic pathology in this slide is the fungal infection so just want you to don't confuse these things these are the also it can be a fungal spores also but uh, if you see on high microscopy and if you see with more experience you will easily going to identify the hyphae and the bacterial infection now gimsa is one of the stain which can also highlight the fungal hyphae you can easily predict and even even some people do uh, also classify what kind of uh, fungus is that it's arching acutely or it, it form a 90 degree arch so before myopsy actually forming a 190 degree uh, branching however uh, other are acutely forming branching like this so this is the candida it is a uh, septate you can see a septate but you don't need to go into detail you just need to identify at least this is a fungal hypis which can be pick on pas d and gimsa also so bacteria just i just touched little bit but if you see a picture of that so this is a basically not in biopsy but in fnac you should know what is fnac and what is biopsy it's very important at your level so if you if you think in the background there is an uh, keratinocyte with a nuclei and if you see there is a sprinkling of some cells or some minute vessel like right these are the very minute minute vessel like and these are the bacteria infection or what you call it uh, uh, uh bacillus which actually uh, lactobacillus which is actually a normal flora but at time of immunocompromise or 
other uh, etiological agents like uh, puberty, menopause, etc. So such become such colonies become aggravated, and uh, it do cause certain kind of uh, uh, you can say an infection. So there is another bacterial vaginosis or which is a vaginitis, and in this, what you get it, uh, there is a specific infection which is known as Gardnerella vag uh, vaginosis. Now, this is different from the previous lactobacillus infection because here they are scattered. But in this infection, what you got it is a clue cells, right? Clue cells is nothing but sticking of such bacilli over a keratinocyte. This is keratinocyte, which is uh, actually uh, swallow or what you call it. Uh, this is normal keratinocyte. So in this keratinocyte, the sticking of this, this kind of bacilli and such cell is known as flu cell, which is very common in this kind of infection. Although it's not very common infections, but you don't need to know these kind of infections. So the other important infection is chlamydia, right? You don't need to go into uh, further uh, subtypes or which is that, but you need to understand about uh, the morphology of this infection. So these basically the small rounded spherical bodies which are present inside the, inside the phagocytes. And these are very important causing a certain kind of uh, pelvic inflammatory diseases. So another example, another uh, is the gonorrhea. And you will find these and gonorrhea again in the macrophages. So you can easily pinpoint it and if you go in uh, for further uh, confirmation you can apply for certain molecular tests also. Actinomyces again is very important. I'm just rushing into because we have some important slides to cover and these are the infections which you need to just pinpoint and just pick it up on the uh, morphology and there is no uh, uh, high five rule for picking that thing up so that's why i'm just rushing it up if, if you still have queries you can uh, you can check me up or you can uh, just drop me a message for that i'll, I'll stop and i'll explain it to you however uh, for you and at this time and at this level you need to actually uh, identify the morphology pick it up on the fnac or pick it up on the biopsy right so actinomyces we are discussing in actinomyces not here but in every tissue in every part you will find such kind of flower like structure whenever you get this flower kind of structure see what you need to identify these have no nuclei and these have no cytoplasm kind of thing like this these are different thing now first you need to pick it up is it a different or is it a normal thing so you will see the the uh, the surroundings are nuclei there are a lot of nuclei if you see in in this picture, it is not obviously visible, but if you see on the high power of such, such light, you will see a nuclei and cytoplasm. But if you see this, there are new nuclei, but a pink color of material, which actually forming a flower like, and there is something sprouting from these flowers. So these are the hint of actually identify ectomyces. Because see, if you see a slide and you diagnose this is an ectomyces, immediately you're going to start the medication for that patient. No? You're not going for antibiotic therapy or you're not going for experimenting other uh, therapies for the patient. If you pinpoint and exactly diagnose the thing on the slide, which is very easy. So because maybe you find it difficult because you're seeing on the first time or you are just seeing in that approach in the first time. If you're seeing the slide, on, on these vision, on these vision, you need to start the therapy. So you're going to pick it up on the right track. So, and again, this, if you see something sprouting in some uh, hive, these are the basically high piece which are actually going to become a flower-like structure. So this is definitely going to be different from this part. This part composed of a cell and this part composed of something which is actually going in this way, right? So these are the high fees of a fungus. So this is very important. and uh, not here, but at every or at every skin in any any part of a uh, body, if you come across such kind of thing, but uh, because it is also concomitantly present with other pathology also, so you can pinpoint label it as an ectomyces. You don't need to go for PCR for detecting that. So this is a very spot diagnosis also. So very important parasite. Uh, we need to cover very, very important parasites. So just read it up because it's most of the time it do our examiner do us in the exam, try coming in vagina analysis. It's a very important uh, organism. It's a pear shape. I am, I'm just telling you because it, in scenario-based questions, it do comes like this, pear shape, flagellated protozoa. So you need to remember and highlight these points. 
uh, right? And it's one of the very important part of STDs or sexually transmitted diseases. And in these signs and symptoms, what you brought it, prouty, smelling, greenish, yellow is discharge. And uh, again, the, another important thing is the strawberry cervicitis. If you go and see cervix, you will find it, the cervix is strawberry-like. And how it looked like? It looked like this. This is an outer ecto cervix, and you can see there's the spots, the pale color, pale in color, and however, they have a pink dark color of the stop, which appears to be like in a strawberry. So it is on a strawberry cervix. So whenever there hint coming in your portions like strawberry cervix or pear shaped flagellated protozoa, so think about the trichomona vaginalis and how they look like. They look like this, right? It's very easy to identify if you see some organism which have a flagella and pear kindly roughly a pear shaped body so you can easily label that as a uh, trichomina vagina i hope you get it, it because it's very easy to identify it, right so uh, without uh, going into pid it's uh, this uh, topic is incomplete so pid is an infection which begins in the vulva and vagina and is spread upward and involve most of the structure of female genital tract. So because these, uh, this is very important, because these kind of infection is start from the lower tract and it go upward and involve the other symptoms and present with a very, very uh, severe consequences. So it usually present with pain, uh, at nasal tenderness, fevers, vaginal discharge. And the, these are the agents which are actually very much important and very much highlighting this, right? So it will lead to a certain lethal infections also. So the, the idea or the, the thing is that these infections usually start from the lower tract, lower female genital tract, and it ascend upward and it is spread and it causes an infection, right? So uh, if you if you remember this slide, it would be really, uh, it would be really helpful for you because these are the key organisms which actually cause the pelvic inflammatory disease, which, which are mostly STD related. And second part you need to remember is that this kind of infection will start from the lower genital tract. For example, vagina and cervix, this kind of start, they go upward and go a lot of, lot of severe consequences, which include endometritis, acute superative serpentophoritis, self pubotubular abscess, pyloserpengitis, pyloserping, chronic serpentitis, hydroserpentitis. They form adhesions, they form strictures, they form pus, uh, they form a lot of uh, inflammatory mediators which actually stick to the other cell, forming structures. And so this pelvic inflammatory in itself is a very big topic. Uh, and for this two minutes is not enough for that, but still you need to remember that pelvic inflammatory disease is a major, major reason is that the cause is that these organisms are a cause and they actually ascend it up and causing an infection of the rest of the uh, uh, genital tract or area, right? So uh, uh, this is the one of the slide. Can anybody guess what is it? Yes, you can reply me up in the chat box. What is it? So I'll take one minute break and I just want you to know what you know about it. This is an endometrium uh, slide or, uh, and it shows that it actually indicating what is it. Can anybody reply? Was it what the arrow indicating of TB? Okay, another answer. See, the difference in sitting in this class is to correct yourself, right? Very good, right? So I want you to understand that if you, if you now you are at a level, when you come to see a slide, you cannot directly say it is TB, right? This is uh, Hadika, you're right. I'm not, uh, I'm just, just trying to tell you, when you see something, you just start with the very basic. This is a granuloma, right? And granuloma can be of TB, but it can be of the foreign body, it can be of fungal, it can be of other things also. There's a lot of things which actually forming a granuloma, right? So first of all, when you see, first of all, identifying the things, you are seeing the site which have a lot of granular structure, right? So first of all, this is an endometrium which forming a glands, right? If you're going to pick it up, this, these are the glands. First of all, identify the tissue or identify the things which you are actually seeing. Now come to the pathology. There is an abnormal collection of epithelioid histiocytes. These are the abnormal histiocytes and there's a one big uh, giant cells which actually, uh, now for a new definition, if you see a collection of histiocytes, you can label it uh, 
granuloma now in the post graduate books and in the new articles but for you people uh, it is mandatory to call it granuloma we need to have an epithelioid histocytes plus adjoint cells and the rim of plasma cells now it's a very old definition but if you see new uh, articles there if the collection of histocytes are there we, we label it granuloma so even if we, if we see in the slides and if we see in the biopsies in our department we we are actually uh, Uh, asking the clinician to go for further investigation of the TB and the fungus infection and other things which actually form in the granules. So, apart from that, for you, yes, it's the granuloma. So, it is an endometrium which actually have a granuloma. So, if we find the granuloma in the endometrium, so uh, we definitely uh, are going to label that the granulomatous inflammation, and we further. Uh, go for further confirmation a granuloma is formed because of either fungus because of the tb because of the uh, foreign bodies because of the certain wicked cell infections there's a long list of differential if you find that granuloma but here in our uh, vicinity the tb is very common so we just ask for a tb workup first so uh, that is great uh, all you have answered so this is granulomatous inflammation because it is related to pelvic inflammatory diseases that's why i just included this slide in that so so coming on to very important things and i just want you to uh, grab some important informations we have pre invasive lesions in the vulva right and the few things are very important right and uh, if we chalk it out in vulva what we need to study this is the this is the line of uh, or the basic headings what you need to remember or what you need to read about it right so number one is bartholin cells because bartholin gland is a normal constituent vulva, vulva as we discussed before so assist from that or if it suffered from some kind of injury or some intervention surgical intervention it ruptured it put it out in it form a cyst and if it's and it's further super uh infected with infection so it form a very big cyst and it is not Uh, very comfortable and somehow it's uh, makes the patient for uh, go and for checkup and uh, that's how you can see and you can do a biopsy and you can come across this is a bartholin gland lining and this is a bartholin cyst now apart from the benign very basic lesions we have very important things for example inflammatory dermatosis which includes uh, psoriasis and other skin diseases because this is the part where squamous epithelium and keratinization so all the conditions and all the diseases which you can came across on the skin pathologies you will find it in the vulva right so in, we are not going to touch the inflammatory dermatosis here it includes psoriasis chronic dermatitis and all the things which you can imagine and you can consider uh, in the skin second is specific thing in the vulva is a lichen sclerosis and squamous cell hyperplasia right and third is when right this is a dysplastic so this is the boundary here you will find the benign lesions and this is obviously not malignant lesion but it's a borderline thing because it will it will go toward it will progress toward the carcinoma right so thinking about the bartholin cells just talking about the bartholin cells you will come across this is this kind of cyst can result and it never become malignant because it's a very uh, benign thing like you know it is all right this is a second heading what we are talking about and uh, here uh, what we call it there are two very important things which are which is known as lichen sclerosis atopic skin and lichen similis chronicus that is an old name now it is known as squamous cell hyperplasia right so i think it in your book it is also written like this but now, new name is squamous cell hyperplasia just uh, i just mentioned in the previous slide squamous cell hyperplasia right so i just want you to understand these two things because these you come across and if you find these thing in the vulva you can also pinpoint or spot diagnostic so what you need to remember in these two condition is the fibrosis and inflammation now where the fibrosis occur and where the inflammation occur we will see here in this picture but first of all just try to memorize these two term like in sclerosis sclerosis usually means atrophic right so by the name atrophic you keep remember lichen sclerosis and lichen simplex is chronic as or squamous cell hyperplasia as the name indicate related to increased thickness or thickening epidermis right we see in here so if you if you if you if you are with me and you get it you will never never get it wrong because 
see what is a normal epi uh, we just discuss what is a normal this is an epidermis and it should be like this ready uh, ridges and this is the layer of keratinocytes and this is uh, this is uh, keratins, right? So this is a normal epidermis, right? And here, what you see, have you, have you ever, uh, are you getting the ready ridges here? I don't think so. There are no ready ridges. And when there is no ready ridges and it become totally flat and the thickness, you can see it's like this, as compared to this, obviously there's a thinning of an epidermis, number one point, and there's a lot of ready ridges. So that, and there's no adnexa here, right? No adnexa here, but it's apart from adnexa, you will find edematous, fibrotic patch. So here you can label that it's an atopic skin and it's, and if you find these three, four findings in the vulva, you can easily make a diagnosis or differential diagnosis at least of a lichen sclerosis. So it's very easy, very, very easy to pinpoint. And in the lower dermis, you will find a lot of inflammation in the pink area, obviously not very clear, but you can pick it out. These, these are the, whenever you see the pink area, think about the fibrosis, right? Whenever you see pink area, a lot, think about which cytoplasm will form, which have a lot of cytoplasm that form a pink area. So fibroblasts have a much more cytoplasmic part as compared to other cells. And if you find this blue, blue color area, that are the nuclei. So if their inflammation is there or some kind of abnormal cells are there, so obviously the nuclear forming this blue, blue pinpoints areas. So uh, lichen sclerosis is nothing but the thinning of an epidermis with the loss of epidermis ridges. And uh, if you find it that in the uh, vulva or vagina, so you will easily pinpoint it. This is the lichen sclerosis. Now, apart from the lichen sclerosis, we have squamous cell hyperplasia. As the name indicate, the thickness of the squamous epithelium is this. If you find such kind of thickness, and then see, if you're going into detail, if you see a thickening epidermis, so you should first consider one etiology, which we have just discussed is the condyloma accumulator, right? Which we discussed because of the HPV viral infection. Thickening epidermis, think about condyloma, uh, condyloma accumulator, right? Number one. Number two thing is that squamous cell hyperplasia. And number three thing is that, is it, is it, is it uh, neoplastic lesion? Is it uh, invasive carcinoma or uh, is it uh, carcinoma in situ? That is known as a vaginal intraepithelium lesion or is it a carcinoma? Now, in the condyloma accumulatum, what we have just discussed, we have got the chylocytic change and the cytopathic effect, which is actually the halo around the nucleus. Wait, are you seeing some kind of halo around the nucleus? This is a very good slide. I know, I understand. But broadly, uh, if I go back and show you the chylocytic change again, so you can easily pinpoint it, what I'm relating to. Let me show you again the chylocytic change like this. Very broadly, chylocytic halo nuclei with us with the nuclei. We're not getting that in in the in that slide. So this is the chylocytic effect, or this is the cytopathic effect of chylocytic change, which are not going to see in this uh, picture, which is uh, this. Obviously, in this. So we exclude this diagnosis, right? Now, neoplastic lesion or intraepithelium lesion in intraepithelium lesion, we need to be a dysplastic change in that. Dysplastic change include uh, hyperchromasia, increased nuclear cytoplasmic ratio, although there is a little bit increase in nuclear size and uh, because overall thickness is increased. But if you see there is no abnormal cell is there. Abnormal cell means there should be like very dark color, irregular nu nuclei with the uh, dark color of uh, nucleoli, with visible nucleoli and abnormal right. mitotic figure. You, we will not get any kind of abnormal mitotic figure. Even the normal mitotic figure is also is not even there. So if such kind of dysplastic change is not there, so you can easily include the in situ lesions and the carcinomatous lesion, and we will come across such kind of lesion for further investigation which is a squamous cell hyperplasia. So that's how we make, we normally, routinely we make the diagnosis in histopathology lab. We just uh, send it down that such kind of key symptoms will come in this, this, this category. And then we rule it out on the basis of the key features. So I hope you get it.
this. This is important because I'm waiting for you. This is important. So uh, uh, I hope you get it. I hope so. If you have any queries, so please stop me here. So I, I, I explain again, because this is important. You will come across such uh, questions related to such topic. Lichen sclerosis never had a thick in epidermis. That's why I compared both of them together. Uh, uh, see, in the initial stages, when you're, if you're, if you're deeply going to talk about in detail, in initial stages, yes. But for you people, uh, I think uh, if you get a picture in exams or in 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 even in your scenario based questions, you will you will give you will be given a very full blown picture of a lichen sclerosis. So in full blown lichen sclerosis, you will never get a thickness of that. Sclerosis itself means an atrophy or fibrosis. So whenever you find a word of that, always think about the thinning, thinning of an epidermis. Okay, Adhika, I hope you get it. So if any other question, I, I'll stop and I just uh, want to answer it because it is very important. Okay, okay. So moving on. See, the reading part is very easy. If you're going to read it up from the book, you can easily read it up. Me sitting here wasting, um, I mean, you are also uh, taking your time here. So you should learn all the things which is not, you can easily get it from the book. So these are the things you can even discuss. And you all are most welcome in my uh, office. If you have any query, if you have any, any concern, if you want to read more, because in this limited time, you're not going to give you each and everything, which I want you to give. But actually, uh, because of the limited time, we are not going in detail. So rushing on again because we need to cover a lot of important topic. So this is again, uh, just want to show you the thickening of an epidermis, which we get it in the previous slide also. So here we just go through the, uh, uh, again, we are going through in detail in high power and find it the cytopathic effect. If we're not getting it, we see some more other uh, features of uh, condyloma and then we exclude that condyloma and we stick to it. Now, after that, we have intraepithelium lesions. Now, before that, what I want you to know about is this. The intraepithelium lesions are what, right? Intraepithelium lesions are that. These are the keratinocytic layer, right? If you find this and this, these are the keratinocytes, right? And see in the if you remember the first pictures in the lower we have increased nuclei and when when the keratinocytes mature it actually loosens their nuclei and here the keratin is totally free of nuclei this is a normal pattern of how the keratinization maturation take place keratinocyte maturation take place but if there's a lot of turning over of a cell and then it goes from here to here to here and we are forming hyperchromasia, increased mitotic abnormal activity, prominent nucleoli, disturbance in the nucleocytoplasmic ratio. So we should be worried about, is it in, in situ lesion? In situ mean if this is a basement membrane of the keratinocyte. So if such kind of things remains inside it, we can call it in situ lesions. If it comes out and drop it here, and so obviously this is an invasion occur, so that's it form a full blown carcinoma. But in this picture, and if you see, it's not very good picture. You cannot appreciate the, all the cytopathic change in that. But uh, overall, if you say, and if you consider that such three things, number one, hyperchromasia, prominent nuclei, abnormal cytoplasmic nuclei ratio, and abnormal mitotic figures. If you get these things in these lining, so you can label it, is it, is it a pin one? If you see in two third of that, you can visit label at win two and full blown carcinoma in situ. Although it's not important for you to label that thing, but what you need to understand, you need to differentiate it from the normal etiology. In normal, you will never find an abnormal mitotic figure in that part, right? So little bit, little bit detail. We are not discussing about the carcinoma minded. We are just discussing about the win. The giant well, well, intra epithelial lesions, right? So, we are not going into carcinoma, we have a separate class of carcinoma. I hope I'll be with you in that class. Uh, so, we'll, we'll go into discuss in detail, but what I'm just want you to remember so, in, in, in the vulva, there are two uh, basic uh, morphology the basaloid and varthi and the keratinized granus carcinoma. So, most of this type of carcinoma develop from the vent, right? intraepithelium region. But this keratinized squamous carcinoma is usually developed from lichen sclerosis, which we have just checked it out, and HPV not related to that. 
So always remember the vein, in, vein uh, vulvar intraepithelium lesions is caused by most of the time HPV. Now, if it depends on the subtype of the HPV, if it's from the six and uh, eight or 11 type, it form a condyloma. But if the HPV, human papilloma virus 16 or 18 in involved, it's definitely going to form carcinoma. And why through this first, the vein is formed, intraepithelium region is formed, and then finally, this one's formed. There's a, there's a little uh, tricky thing in some kind of question, so I just want to explain it. However, this is important as far as your carcinoma is concerned, although it's not a carcinoma class, but I just want you to know that there are two important uh, proteins which is uh, detected by uh, human papilloma virus, HPV. Human papilloma virus. So the mouse is very bad. I, I'm very sorry. About. So human papilloma virus actually ejaculate two very important proteins, which is E7. This is it, and E6. Right. These are the very two important protein or onco protein which are actually uh, related to HPV. And this E7 and E6 actually E6 is actually going to bind with P53. Right, a very important regulator of cell cycle. You can say it in very easier word. And when it binds to P53, it actually hinder all the important uh, ongoing phenomena, which are very important for a regular cell cycle. For example, it hindered or it stopped apoptosis, which is required from an abnormal cell. But if it, apoptosis is uh, stopped, so you can imagine that the cell will go on the cell cycle of an abnormal cell will go and the cell will keep multiplying and producing. And that's how intraepithelium neuroplasm in form and further it metastasizes it form an invasive carcinoma. So just remember E6, which are releasing from the HPV actually binds with P53, an important, very important mechanism like apoptosis repaired or deactivation of damaged uh, DNA and E7. If some questions relate E7, E7 basically bind to the retinoblastoma uh, protein or you can say very important thing. And if you remember retinoblastoma protein is binded with E2F factor, right? So when E2F factor is released from RB protein, it go and it is start the cell cycle and it go and it it regulates the cell cycle. So what it, it it does, it actually bind to RP and it actually causing a release of E2F factors. And that actually uh, helped or it actually causing a cell cycle, keep going, keep going, keep going. And that's how the multiplication will occur. That's how the all abnormal multiplications occur. It forming in cyto lesion and further on in VIN 1, VIN 2, VIN 3. And then finally, the invasive carcinoma. But this is very important, very, very important uh, pathogenesis. Uh, I hope you, we will discuss uh, if I'm getting your class. So we're going to discuss in your carcinoma part. But just, just a glimpse of that. So you can remember, I quickly uh, going to complete that thing. Said so the most of the vagina, vulva, and cervix, we have uh, HPV infections, which actually related to in situ lesion and further on, it forming a carcinoma. So we have discussed the vulva. We, in vagina, if you are going to take a screenshot, it, it is good. You have developmental abnormality anomalies, which are very easy. And what you're going to discuss is vein, uh, vaginal uh, intraepithelium lesions, and then further infiltrating SCC adenosis and adenocarcinoma finding. So this is different. And cervix, we have such kind of in which we need to discuss about sin in sin. Uh, this is good picture. This is a cervix. So I have just mentioned you that the cervix is two part: an ectocervix, which is this, which is covered by squamous epithelium, and endocervix, which is covered by glandular epithelium. These are the cuboidal cells. Right? This is a good picture. Yes, this is a good picture. So this is an endocervix, which have a columnar epithelium. And this is an ectocervix, which have an squamous epithelium, right? So in the ectocervix, whatever, see the in situ lesion or all the sin, what we are talking about is actually arising from squamous uh, epithelium. So we call it as a cervix in situ carcinoma. If such kind of lesion arising from here, so 
because this will going to form adenocarcinoma this is going to form an squamous cell carcinoma so in situ carcinoma in adeno adenomas are also there and adenoma malignum is one of the example of that but we are not going into detail in carcinoma what we are going to do we are just concerning about the sin which is carcinoma uh, cervix intraepithelium carcinoma nowadays uh, that uh, this sin terminology is actually replaced by the word uh, squamous uh, low grade squamous intraepithelium lesions and high grade squamous intraepithelium lesions. i have a slide for that that goes into this let's just cover this slide so <clears throat> the sin 1 sin 2 sin 3 is depend on on the percentage of the squamous layer involvement for example, one third is involved, that is sin one. For example, one third by mean, for example, if the squamous epithelium is such thickness, if some such this plastic, this plastic cell is involved in one third of the squamous epithelium, we call it sin. If two third is involved, that is a sin two. And if the whole is involved, that is known as sin three or we call it carcinoma in cell. But this terminology is now is altered by a name, no great intraepithelium lesions or high grade intraepithelium lesions so they clump two and three into high grade intraepithelium lesion and send one into low grade intraepithelium lesion now it does not progress directly to pre-malignant lesion usually regress so the, the all the sin one lesions are usually regress usually regress but sometimes at the 10 percent of them are actually progressed towards the progress towards the hsin that is high grade high grade intraepithelium lesion high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. So finally, the high grade squamous lesions and actually progress to carcinoma. So what you need to remember is that the etiological agent, the basic thing etiological agent. So HPV type 16 and 18, very important. Please write it down somewhere. 16 and 18 are important for forming intraepithelium and carcinoma lesions, right? And subtype of HPV 6 and 11 is important in, trying, in forming the benign lesions. 6 and 11 actually forming a benign lesion, which we have just discovered, which is called as condyloma micromedator, right? So what you need to remember in sin, the etiology, right? We have just a little bit touch about the pathogenesis, how HPV actually causing dysregulation of cell cycle, that is by emitting E6 and E7, right? So this is it, the time is up. So uh, what I'm going to do is to take you more questions for you. So I have, I, I think, do you have any class just after that? If not, I, I have time, so I can explain you again. If you have 15 minutes, so we can, we can uh, continue. Okay, you have class one. So we can take 10 minutes, so okay. So I'll take questions and that is uh, important for you. Okay, Mohammad Vakas, what do you want me to explain again? What part, what do what you want me to explain? You can open your mic if you want to. This slide, this slide, this slide, the current slide. Okay, this is a rough slide. See, very important thing. If I go, if you explain your what, what I want to. So in the vulva, in the vagina, and in the cervix, right? First uh, lesion, if we are talking about pre-invasive lesion in vulva, vagina, and cervix, we are if we are discuss about the pre-invasive lesion, we come across the intraepithelium lesion, which is comes inside the epidermis, right? So inside the epidermis, if the lesion is remain inside the epidermis, and it shows dysplasia, hyperchromasia, abnormal mitosis, hyper uh, disturbance in the nuclear cytoplasmic ratio. So we call it in vulva, vagina, and cervix, we call it intraepithelium lesions, right? So by name, if it's in the vulva, we call it when vulva intraepithelium lesion. If it's in the vagina, we call it vaginal intraepithelium lesion. If it's in the cervix, we call it cervix intraepithelium lesions. Right? This is clear. By intraepithelium lesion, we means that we come across a morphology in which cytoplasm nucleus size is disturbed. We found an abnormal mitosis and we will get uh, this plastic abnormal hyperchromatic prominent nuclei cells. Now, this is clear. This is how we will going to make a demarcation between benign and this plastic cell at least, right? So in the three categories, we have three 
uh, names for the lesion which are restricted towards an epidermis layer. Right, first this is here. Now, the second thing is that in the cervix and even in the post-graduation book in the vagina, sin months into sin three is actually replaced by terminology which is known as SL low grade uh, LSL, LSIL, that is low grade intraepithelium lesion and high grade intraepithelium lesion, high grade squamous intraepithelium lesion. So SL and XL, these are the terminology which is now used for these kind of things, right? Because both of the, these have a same prognosis, right? Sin 2 and Sin 3 have a same prognosis. That's why they categorize them into high-grade squamous intraepithelium lesion. And Sin 1 categories is categorized as low-grade intraepithelium lesion. Now, most of the time, Sin 1, or you call it low-grade intraepithelium lesions, what we get it, suppose this is an epidermis, so the, only the lower third is involved by Lower third is involved by this plastic chain. So we label that as SYN1 or low grade squamous intraepithelium lesion. So most of the time it regress by a proper application of a treatment and by proper, there is no surgical intervention involved in the SYN1 treatment. So most of the time it regress. Most of the time when we biopsy and we find one third is involved and we actually give the treatment of HPV because most of the time HPV 16 and 18 is involved in the etiological agent. So if we uh, give drugs against that and we uh, treat according to that, we don't need to go for the surgery in these kind of regions. So most of the time it regress, it does not progress to further, right? But in SYN2 and SYN3 lesions, they usually, usually are very high grade lesion because you see, this is the epithelium. So whole epithelium is involved. So it is impossible to cure it back to the normal. So what there is a lot of uh, procedures and there's a lot of surgical intervention for that. Uh, you have another class. So just, I'm going to finish it up. So just, just listen to that. Uh, so these kind of lesions are do progress to carcinoma. And uh, what you need to remember is that HPV 16 and 18 is involved in the in situ lesion of cervix, vagina, and vulva. Very important. And if you're going to remember this, is it's, it's going to be good. These uh, HPV actually emitting E6 and E7 which are the main culprit of causing the carcinoma. Please remember these three things at least. SIN1, SIN2, SIN3, HPV16 and 18, and E6 and E7. These three points are important and enough for this topic. So this is it. I hope you get, you get it. And uh, I don't know, uh, are we going to meet next time or not? Uh, I hope so. So I'm going to explain. I just want you to explain. Otherwise, you have my email address. I think it is written in the slide uh, in the... Uh, First of the slides, you can email me. I usually respond late, but I usually respond to everyone who actually email me. So uh, this is my email. Do write to me your feedback if you have any query. And you can also welcome in my office for any query and any explanation regarding that. You are most welcome. This itself is a very lengthy topic. So I just highlighted an important point. I hope this is uh, a good take home message. Uh, and uh, any further uh, query, you can email me and you can uh, come to my office and uh, if you have any query, you can discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shahid. Thank you.